Good morning. Good morning. Well, <laughs> hi. Welcome to First United Methodist here in Sykeston. Um, if you have your bulletin, uh, there is a connect card on that. If you don't mind filling that out for us this morning, that, that lets us know who is here, how we best can serve you, and you can put that in the basket on your way out this morning. And I wanted to share with you guys uh, from this weekend, Friday and Saturday, we had Feed My Starving Children here in Sykeston at the Armory. Yeah, it was, uh, don't, don't clap yet, wait, there's more. Um, I actually, so I, I did both um, Friday a little bit and Saturday. It was my first experience, and I can tell you personally how much of a blessing it was to see so many people from so many different churches and just uh, in the community that came together for one purpose, to make sure that the, these kids get fed. Um, cold chills moment for me to just take a breath, look around, and think, holy cow, we're all doing this together. It was a blessing to be there and to work and to sweat a lot because the armory is hot. It is hot in there. Um, so the stats, though, I want to I wanna share with you so we can celebrate this together. The stats from this weekend, Friday and Saturday, we filled 23 pallets. That's 828 boxes. 178,848 meals total. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But wait, there's more. Uh, so at the very end, they tallied up and they let us know that we had uh, a total of, we fed a total of 489 children will have a meal for a day for a full year because of what we did in two days. And that is worth celebrating. I think that's awesome. A blessing to be a part of it. For those of you that were there, you already know how much of a blessing it was. And I'd like to invite four generations, I think we set up for our special Mother's Day prayer we have this morning. Thank you. Good morning. We're very honored to be asked to do this, and we're so thankful for our church family and these leaders. Dear God, on this day set aside to recognize mothers, we pray your blessing upon expectant mothers, spiritual mothers, biological mothers, foster mothers, adoptive mothers, single mothers, bonus and stepmothers, grieving mothers, and grandmothers. Lord, your word says to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. So today we rejoice with those for whom this is a day of celebration and we weep with those for who are weeping for whatever reason. We pray you will comfort them with your goodness and with your mercy. Oh, holy God, on this Mother's Day, may we all be reminded of and filled with your love and your nurturing kindness and your peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Good job. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you guys would stand with us in the room, uh, we're going to sing a song together this morning.
have a seat. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Jennifer, and I'm the other pastor, and it's a joy and a gift to be with you all. Yeah, y'all come on up. <laughs> uh, I, um, I want to invite some folks onto the stage. This is a really special day. Today, we get to celebrate three baptisms. Um, yes, this is a sacred moment, a sacrament in, um, in the life of the church. This is the day when we say, um, you are God's very own, and we use water, and we pray together, and it's a way of marking them as, as God's people, and it's also a marking, a sign, a, a way of remembering God's grace. Y'all can come on up, sorry, <laughs> uh, as remembering God's grace, God's power at work in us. Now, there's a lot of folks, uh, we're going to baptize um, a little baby, we're going to baptize an adult, we're going to use a little water, we're going to use a lot of water, and that's because the way we understand, yeah, come on up, the way we understand baptism in the Methodist church is that it's God's work with us, and it's God's grace offered to us without price, even before we can fully understand it. So now, Lily is probably not going to remember this. Uh, we're going to ask some questions uh, to her parents and godparents on her behalf. Um, and what's going to happen is a little bit later, she'll, uh, around the eighth-ish grade, she'll be invited to participate in something called confirmation. She'll get to hear these, these promises that were made on her behalf, um, and she'll get to confirm them for herself, to claim the faith as her very own. Um, so in a way, we can say, we say sometimes infant baptism is like God saying, I love you. Confirmation is that saying, I love you back. Now, we also have some folks who are a little bit older, um, Chad and Addie. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it like a little, you know. Uh, he's an adult. Uh, and, and so in a lot of ways, uh, for adults, they look back and they say, wow, God's already been in my life. God's already said, uh, God's already claimed me. God's already been working in my life. God's been, been using me in ways that are, I can't even understand except for the power of God at work in me. And I want to publicly say now, I'm claiming that faith for my very own. It's that I love you and I love you back. And so it's a joy and a gift to get to celebrate that with you today. Pastor Chandler is going to ask them some questions first. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. To the parents of Lily and to Addie and Chad, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you believe in God and promise to serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, we do. Do you repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, we do. To the parents of Lily, will you raise this child in the church? Will you teach and show them, show them God's grace in a way that will help them lead a Christian life? If so, say, we will. To Addie and Chad, do you desire to be baptized in this faith? If so, say, I do. And to the congregation, to you guys. To you who represent the church, do you as Christ's body reaffirm your faith and repent of your sin? If so, say, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and include these people in your care? Will you pray for them, surround them with love and forgiveness, that they will know God's love and grow in service to others? If so, say, we will. I invite all of you to pray with me over this special gift of water. Let's pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. 
pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. Okay. Now Lily gets to go first. <laughs> Hi. Okay, I'm gonna turn you around. This way. Oh, 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 oh. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'll give you back. <laughs> Lily and Jane, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you will grow to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yay, good job. Oh, here we go. All right. Yay. Hi. Hi. So I'm going to invite at, oh, oh, yes. Uh, something that was in the water, other than me just kind of dipping that out, um, there's a couple rocks in there. And this, we, are, we have one for each of you today. This is something that we do here in this church. These are really smooth rocks with crosses on them. And uh, whenever we baptize somebody, we place this rock in the, in the same water they were baptized in. Um, not because this is really special fancy water. This is just water from the water hose. <laughs> but when we come together and we pray together, it becomes something special. It becomes a sign of God's grace at work in our life. So this rock is a reminder that just as rocks are formed, they're jagged and they're sharp, water rushes over them and smooths them and changes them. And so we pray the waters of baptism continue to shape her life, to smooth her and change her uh, as she reflects the love of God in the world. Now, um, as they are, as they, you all can return back to your seat if you'd like. And um, it was funny, Lindsay said, now, can somebody be ba baptized on Mother's Day? <laughs> and I said, well, I was baptized on Mother's Day 40 years ago. So I hope that you can. <laughs> uh, so we're thankful for them. We also have um, Chad and Addie. This is something they have been um, thinking about and planning for a while and something they wanted to do together. So this is really special um, to have them here. And Addie, you're going to go first? Okay. Wait, yeah, let's take these. Okay, I'm going to hold your hand. Here we go. There you go. You can come down. <laughs> it's room temperature. <laughs> <laughs> she said, are you sure? Uh, can we go down one, one more step? There you go. There you go. And now we'll have you sit on your bottom. This, oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, do you want to hold your nose? Do you want to? Okay, okay, here we go. Adeline Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you will grow to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yay! <laughs> oh. I see you made her go first, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to come down to this first step. There you go. There we go. <laughs> hey. Hey, do you want to hold your nose too? Uh, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Timothy Chad, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you will grow to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. There we go. Good job. Good job. Aww. Yay! We give thanks for the Holy Spirit, for God's work um, in and through these people. And um, as you all prayed and you responded earlier um, that you will be praying for these people and that we commit to surrounding them with a community of love and forgiveness. And so um, I'm excited about uh, the rest of how we see how God um, continues to work in and through each of them. We're going to sing some more songs if y'all like to stand together.
my shepherd and he is everything
take heart of deserts and gardens. He has good plans. He has good plans for me. If I know my father, I know my father. Y'all can have a seat. Well, hello again. I'm really glad that y'all are with us, um, joining us in person or online today. Um, I had somebody this past week say, did you feel the bumps this week? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, last Sunday I was driving through Tennessee and I couldn't watch, so I stuck the phone up on the dash. So so if you're worshiping with us online, uh, please be safe. Uh, (laughs) It's fine, stick up on the dash or whatever, uh, but we're just glad to have you with us. If you're joining us for the first time, Um, that connect card Pastor Chandler mentioned. We would love to know, um, let us know. We would like to make a donation to Feed My Starving Children in your honor. Now that was the big event that we did um, yesterday, but they continue to receive donations for our event and for others, um, and we would love to do that. If you brought somebody with us, with you, let us know that as well, because we'd love to to make a donation in your honor too. We're thankful for people who invite others uh, and bring others here, Uh, we're, we're thankful for that. Um, Again, this is Mother's Day weekend, as we have said a few times. I'm so thankful to have our beautiful prayer. Uh, That was so special to have four generations up here um, leading our prayer. Now, if you think, uh, oh, I forgot. It's Mother's Day. You don't have a gift. We got you. We are coming in clutch, as the kids say. Um, We got, uh, maybe they don't now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who says that. Not me. Um, Family fun, questions with mom. So these are some booklets we have out there. It's really cute. You can ask your mom a question, ask your kids a question. It'll be hilarious and adorable with little kids. It'll be really meaningful and special with adult children. So make sure um, you pick up one of those. Um, So that was, that's that. uh, Mother's Day weekend, you know, we've got this gift for you. We're also continuing in our series called Back to Life. Now, this is something we've been doing really since Easter, kind of continuing that Easter message. Well, what, is, what difference does that make in our lives now that we celebrated Easter and, and Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, right? Well, what difference does that make to us now? And that's what we've been talking about these last couple weeks. Today, we're going to share a passage from John, John's uh, biography of Jesus' life, the gospel according to John, chapter 14. Now, this is one, um, as you listen, it has some like greatest hits uh, of of various scriptures that you might have heard before. Very often, this passage is read at funerals. Um, So this is one, I know I've read this quite a bit at funerals. It's one of the passages I really, really love. And so this morning, when I saw that it was the assigned reading um, in our lectionary, as we follow along reading different, uh, different passages along with Uh, people from Christians from other denominations um, I didn't cut it it's 21 verses but I couldn't bear to cut it because each one of them I love so much and I want to share it with you today this is from a longer section chapters 13 through 17 that's sometimes called the farewell discourse so these are the last things that Jesus is saying to his disciples Uh, these are the last things he wants to know so if you think about it before you're leaving on a trip you know, or if you're going, to, if you're about to leave somewhere, the last things you want people to hear, the things you really, really want them to remember. Now it starts, like I said, this is chapter 14. It starts in 13. Now, if you remember John chapter 13, we read together on Holy Thursday. This is when Jesus is together with his disciples, with his friends in the, the upper room, and they're having a Passover meal. Now, in John's biography of Jesus' life, they don't actually share in the Last Supper. That's in the other three Gospels. What they do in John's version of the Last Supper with Jesus is as they're eating supper, Jesus takes a towel and wraps it around his waist, and he kneels at their feet. And he goes to each disciple and washes their feet. Now, I say each disciple because they were all there. At the end of chapter 13, Judas the one who would betray him leaves. I'm reminded that Jesus kneels at his feet too and washes his feet. And Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, you love 
one another. As I wash even my enemy's feet, the very one who would betray me, I want you to do that too. Love one another in this way. So that's how chapter 13 ends. And then we pick up here in chapter chapter 14. Now, some people um, like to read the words up on the screen. And if that's you, you're welcome to follow along as I read. Um, But if you feel comfortable, I would invite you just to close your eyes and hear these words. Put yourself in this situation. You've been with Jesus for three years now. You've followed him around. You've seen him feed people, hundreds of people, thousands of people with just a little bit of food. You've seen very sick people uh, be healed and walking. You've seen people who were never supposed to be a part of a part of the group included. You've seen people come together because they were just amazed. They were just drawn into who Jesus was. They couldn't even explain what he was doing. They just knew they wanted to be near him. If you remember that little song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. He climbed all the way to the top of the tree so he could see Jesus as Jesus passed by. They just wanted to be close to him. There were these people who were drawn to him. And this is what has happened these last three years. And now Jesus is with them. They've shared this meal. He's washed their feet. And he says this to them. So I invite you to hear these words. John chapter 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Now, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father's in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it's the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father in me is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very I truly, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I'm in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by the Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of God for all of God's creation. Thanks be to God. Now I know that was a long passage. There was a lot in there and we could spend just six months on that passage alone. But this morning, there are a few things that really stick out to me from this. You know, very often, as I said, I read that passage at funerals because it's such a comforting thing to hear. I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Sometimes life after death, sometimes heaven is is described as streets of gold in the Bible or or a wedding feast. And here Jesus describes everlasting life, um, life in abundance, life with God, life lived with God as a house with many rooms. 
And very often we take that to mean life after death. I'll stand in front of a casket casket in front of so many of you who've been a part of those funerals and I'll say we give thanks that this person's life does not end, but their life lives on in God's love that never ends and God's presence and the promise of eternal life that God gives to each and every one of us. Now, for some people, that's, that's what the resurrection means. It means that when we die, we can have everlasting life. When we die, this life is not all there is, but it lives on. We live on in God's love that never ends. And it means that for us. And also... The resurrection of Jesus, he says, because I live, you also will live. We take that to mean not only will we have life after death, but we'll have life before death too. So there's life here, life in abundance. Sometimes that that verse is translated as life that really is life, not just some, some cheap fake for life, but actually real, true life lived in abundance here with God. There's a promise because I live, you also will live. You can experience that here and now. You know all that stuff I was doing before healing people and bringing people together? You're gonna see even greater things than that. This life I'm offering to you is even more amazing than that. Pastor Chandler mentioned earlier our... Um, Feed My Starving Children, which if you all, who all was there? Can I get a woot? Woo, 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 yeah, okay, thanks. Hands, hands raised are good too. Uh, there was a lot of you there. It was an incredible experience. It was two days, Friday and Saturday. There were four different sessions you could pack. It was an incredible experience. As he said, 489 children somewhere around the world. We're not sure where our meals are gonna go, but 489 children have a meal a day for the next year. And that's gonna change their lives. That's gonna give them a a life now. For some of them, they wouldn't have food. They share this story that in Haiti, um, they take, uh, because the children are so hungry, the mothers take water and they take dirt and they make dirt cakes. They put them together with, they make mud and they sit them out in the sun. And when their children are hungry, they they actually feed them dirt um, to hold them off until the next time that they can get a meal. There's so much hunger and so much need in the world. And this weekend, we got to be a part of blessing someone else around the world, being an answer to their prayer. And it was an awesome weekend and always is. But I have a confession to make. (laughs) There's a circle of trust here. On Wednesday of this past week, we were 200 people short. I was freaking out. (laughs) We had not had all the volunteer slots filled. Um, I didn't know how we were gonna do it. We've done this nine times. This will be nine times. I thought this is gonna be the first time we don't actually pack all the meals. This is it. And um, the first day, that on Friday, when I, I saw the staff people, the F- FMSC staff folks, I pulled one aside. And I said, what happens if we don't pack everything, if we don't have enough people show up? And um, she's kind of given me contingency plans, you know, like, well, here's what we can do and here's what we can do and we can stay and we can stretch this longer. We can invite more people in or we can just take the ingredients, da, da, da. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, there's options. We got them. And we figured it all out. And then she said, but you know what? That never happened. And I was like, well, <laughs> we were like really short on volunteers, so that might happen. I'm glad we have a plan, you know. Um, On our fourth session yesterday, we finished early. Yeah, I mean, that was, all of the meals were packed. People showed up. People showed up and they did something that I could not even imagine on my own. I genuinely thought we weren't going to make it. I'm going to cry just thinking about it. Um, And they showed up, people showed up, and they danced, and they laughed, and they sang, and they packed, and it all got done, all the work got done, and there was this group of people, there's a lot of people that I don't know, um, and I'm kind of like going around and dancing and clapping and trying to meet people, but there was a large group of people I didn't know, and I found out later that they were a group from Arkansas. 
It was a youth group who had wanted to do, they wanted to do Feed My Starving Children, but they'd never done a meal packing event. And so they looked it up, and this was the closest one. They drove two and a half hours, 40 of them, teenagers, (laughs) for a nine o'clock packing. They had to get up at six o'clock. Teenagers (laughs) showed up, and they packed for two hours. Now, they didn't wrap a towel around their waist and they didn't kneel at the feet. Instead, they they sang and they danced and they packed, but they offered themselves in service to others. And so did so many of you. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you're gonna see even greater things than these, even greater things than you can even ask or imagine, right? When you're 200 people short, (laughs) I'm still gonna show up and I'm still gonna complete this because of my work in you. You're gonna see teenagers show up and work their tails off and have so much fun serving others. You're gonna see even greater things than these. You know, when Jesus said, if you keep my commands, he wasn't talking about like just the top 10. You know, we think in the Old Testament, top 10 plus the 500 others that we added together with that. Uh, What he was saying was, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you, so you should love one another. When do you do that? you're gonna see even greater things than these, right? You're gonna see even more healing and feeding and and just amazing things that you can never even imagine. I'm gonna show up and work in and through you because I live because of the resurrection, sorry. Because of the resurrection, because I live, you also will live. Not just life after death, but life before death too. And there's another piece in this, there's so many things we could talk about in this section, but the other one that sticks out, especially for me today, is that Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you orphaned. You're not here by yourself. I'm not asking you to keep my commandments uh, and try really hard and do it in your own strength. I'm going to send you another advocate. Some translations say another comforter. And what I love about that phrase, those two words, is first it says another. Jesus is saying there's, I've already been that for you. I've already been that that comforter, that nurturer, that advocate. You know, what what I did for you, I went before you, I I helped you, I prepared you, I I, I showed you what to do. Um, There's gonna be somebody else who's gonna do that. And and some translations, like I said, say comforter or advocate. And the Greek word there um, is transliterated as paraclete. Um, And it's made up of two words. Do you know that that Greek word para we use uh, as a prefix in some of our, our English words? But para means with or alongside. And that cleat or kaleo means to be called. So he said, there's gonna be another person, another one who's called to be alongside you, who's called to be with you. So you're not doing this in your own power, in your own will, in your own strength. There's another advocate, another comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. So you don't have to do this by yourself. We're gonna get to Pentecost in just a couple weeks when when the Holy Spirit shows up like flaming tongues of fire. But Jesus is kind of laying the groundwork here. Like you're not gonna have to do this by yourself. Even though you won't see me, I'll be with you. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, it will be another advocate, another comforter with you to walk alongside you. God with us, right? to be with you wherever you are. You know, sometimes we refer to the Bible as the the living word because even this ancient text, this ancient book speaks to us today. And I don't know who needs to hear that today, but God is with you. There is another advocate, another comforter coming alongside you, working in and through you. Today's Mother's Day, as we've mentioned a few times, and um, very often on Father's Day, we really make a point to say, uh, 
You know, God is referred to as Father. 99.9% of the time, the dominant image in the Bible is God as Father, God as um, strength and uh, provider and uh, creator, sustainer, all of those things. Um, it has uh, kind of these paternal images of Father. And we, um, Jesus refers to him, uh, as you he heard so many times just in this passage, as God is my Father, that, that parent, that close relationship. But every now and then, uh, at least once, Jesus, and then a couple times in our, our prophetic books, especially in Isaiah, we get these maternal images of God. Especially in, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus looks over the city of Jerusalem. He's standing up on a hill, and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I have longed to gather you up like a hen gathers her chick. And I love hearing those, those kind of maternal nurturing, uh, nurturing images of God that we see throughout the Bible because it reminds me of that Holy Spirit, that spirit of truth coming alongside the other comforter, the other advocate. On Father's Day, we make a, a point especially to say, you know, if your earthly father hasn't been present physically or emotionally if, if referring to God as father is hard for you, we want you to know you have a good father in God. For whatever reason, if Father's Day is hard for you, we want you to know that you have a good father, a good one who, a good, good father who shows you what it's like to love you unconditionally. And here on Mother's Day, I wanna say the same thing. If Mother's Day is hard for you for whatever reason, just know we have the holy comforter the holy nurturer that comes alongside you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm sending another advocate. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth to be with you, to come alongside you so that you can keep my commandments so that you will see even greater things than these. Dear God, wow, just on this special day of baptisms and feed my starving children, ways you've shown up in incredible ways that we couldn't have ever done on our own, we give thanks for the other advocate, another advocate, another um, comforter, your spirit of truth who's come alongside us, working in and through us. Lord, these are big moments where our eyes have been opened and we pray that you'll open our eyes to the other times you're at work in our lives. The ways you move in our world that sometimes we ignore or, or just don't see. Show us how you're working um, here in this place. Show us how you are coming alongside us to be your hands, your feet, your heartbeat here on earth. Lord, teach us, continue to teach us through your spirit of truth what, is, what it is like to live a love-shaped life. Amen. This morning, we will take communion together here in just a moment. But as we are talking about the, the Back to Life series, the, the whole idea is that the resurrection power, that, that Jesus Christ although was in a tomb for three days, rose, defeated death, that that same power of God is with us, is given to us this morning. And, and as we take communion, let this be the reminder of what Jesus did on our behalf, of what Jesus has already gone through to take us to the other side of death. Hear these words this morning. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty 
acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. In our tradition, we, we practice what's called open communion, which means no matter who you are, where you come from, what you've been through, what you've done, you are invited this morning to take communion as the reminder of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And as we dismiss, um, if you would, please stay seated. Our connection team will release you row by row this morning to come forward and get communion as you feel led.
You know how technology be sometimes. It'd be disagreeable. Y'all ready for the sing song yet? Surrounding me, let it rain as you
glad y'all are here with us today. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Um, as you leave, I believe um, Daniel Bird is here. We don't have like a photo backdrop, but if you want to kind of group together somewhere, I think he's happy to take your picture if you're here with family. Uh, also, make sure you pick up a booklet if you are uh, if you need a, a Mother's Day gift. Want to let you know about a couple things real quickly. This Thursday at one o'clock, our um, Methodist women are hosting a women's event. Uh, there'll be a speaker. It's going to be um, lovely at one o'clock if you're around, if you want to be a part of that. Um, Thursday evening, we are hosting, it's called a Next Gen Listening Session. Um, so if you may or may not know, but um, United Methodist Churches are kind of connected together in conferences. And the conference is doing a couple of these groups all around the state um, just to kind of hear what people are needing, wanting from the conference, how they can help in um, Next Generation. So I think we have 30 or so RSVP'd for that who are going to be coming around the area. If, that, if you want to be a part of it too, we'd love to have you. And June 2nd, just make sure you have that on your calendar. Family fun night at the park. Family, family night fun at the park. Park family fun night. I like we're workshopping it. It's still in progress. Um, that there's going to be kites and bubbles and face painting. Oh, my. So you'll want to be a part of it. Make sure you'll be there. So uh, we'll see you next week. Go in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing grace.